Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Subscribers, new viewers, welcome back to Jesse's Barbershop. My name is Jesse. And today we are going to be going over the curly girly method. Curly girl method. It should be called the curly girly method. But before we get started with this, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're familiar with my stuff, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps. And if you haven't done it yet, just do it. Anyways, curly girl method. You've probably heard of the curly girl method. If you haven't, why did, why did you click on this video? Leave that down in the comments down below. I'm genuinely curious. Whether you've heard of it or not, in whatever capacity, the curly girl method has been something that's been around for a while now. And from what I've heard of it, it seems to have been working and getting a pretty positive response. So in this video, I'm going to be going over what the process is and hopefully give you a sense as to whether or not it's something that you might want to try out for yourself. So I got this queued up on my phone here. I'm gonna bring it up on the screen here. So the curly girl method, how to do the curly girl method for beginners as told by Cosmopolitan. Chloe Metzger specifically of the Cosmopolitan, October 7th, 2020. Maybe things have changed, I don't care. Okay, what is the curly girl method? The curly girl method, officially developed by hairstylist and curl expert Lorraine Massey, who wrote Curly Girl, the handbook, haven't read it, is quite literally a guide to getting really excellent hair using and avoiding specific products and styling techniques, okay? Though the specifics can differ, i.e. someone with super tight clothing, blah, 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 blah. The idea behind the curly girl method in general is the same. By figuring out the best cocktail of ingredients and application methods for your exact hair type, you'll be able to amp up your natural wave curl or coil pattern while reducing frizz, dryness, and breakage. Okay, interesting. So what it seems like from the wording of this is it's some sort of system designed to optimize your hair health uh, based on your natural hair type and your wave and curl pattern and all that kind of stuff. So sounds good. I can resonate with that because I am also a system designed to help you optimize your hair health, curl pattern, that kind of stuff. Good, well, let's dive into this. Ah, does the curly girl method work for everyone? Sadly, no. This is a good sign because no method works for everybody. So I like that. Since the whole goal of CGM is to get healthier, fuller, more defined hair, basically seeing the max potential of what your hair can really do, you've got to have a pretty distinct wave pattern to start with. Okay, so it is specifically designed, makes sense based on the name, designed for wavy or curly hair, anywhere from 2A, 2B, all those fucking numbers. I don't know what any of that means. Waves are loose curls, curls are tight waves. Facts. Okay how to do the curly girl method. Since there's no literal book devoted to answering this question, along with Facebook groups and my favorite Reddit communities. Ah, look at this little infograph here. Curly girl method, the basics. Step zero. Interesting. Wash your hair with sulfate filled shampoo to remove the silicone and wax buildup from your strands. Interesting. So this is a concept we use in salons too, where we'll use a uh, clarifying shampoo as they're called, where basically it's designed to be a little bit more harsh and have more detergents in it to strip these oils of waxes and build up and stuff that if you're going to be styling it for like an updo or a color or something like that, you wanna get all that stuff out. Um, so, I mean, sounds good. Step one, cleanse. Wash your hair with a co-wash or sulfate-free shampoo, massaging your scalp for at least 60 seconds before rinsing. Step two, condition. Scrunch a handful of conditioner through your hair until it feels slimy i.e. fully saturated, then detangle with your fingers or a wide tooth comb, rinse out most, but not all conditioner. Mm. Step three, rake and scrunch a palm full of gel, more than feels normal, into your sopping wet hair from roots to tips. Okay. Step four, dry. Cup and scrunch excess water from your hair with a cotton t-shirt, then air dry. Once your hair is 100% dry, scrunch it with your hands to get rid of the crunchy gel coating. Okay. Step five, keep going. Repeat one to four. Ah, repeat one to four every time you get your hair wet and only wash with your reset shampoo if you accidentally use a product with silicones or wax. Hmm. I bet if you've been subscribed here for a while, you'll know the cogs that are turning in my brain because right off the bat, theoretically, it makes sense. It looks like what it's doing is resetting your hair, which is, I mean, they're calling it the reset wash, taking all the bad stuff out, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Just get it all out and then start using what looks to be uh, sulfate free shampoo. Um, I, okay, I got, I got a little confused, but here's where my brain gets a little bit disconnected. And this is because, like I said, if you've been subscribed here for a while, you'll know the emphasis I put on the importance of using proper quality products. So what I'm thinking, this would make perfect sense if the intention is to continue with, I guess, step three, using high quality product, you know, not just a palm full of gel, because I don't know, maybe we'll just continue to read into it. But uh, 
Oh, here, seems pretty easy, right? Well, the curly girl method is a bit more intricate than just a few steps, which brings us to the don't list. Here it is. This is going to answer the questions. In reality, CGM is mainly about cutting out the stuff that messes with your curls, i.e. Uh, anything drying or harsh, and then adding in things that heal, hydrate, and enhance, uh, i.e. moisturizers, proteins, gentle cleansers, that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay, so let's see what we need to avoid. Uh, shampoo. What? Don't freak, you can't use traditional shampoos, the kind that strip the hell out of your hair. More in this below, okay? Heat tools, flat iron, curling iron, etc. occasional diffusion, okay? Again, just seems like they're trying to minimize the amount of external damage and just trying to keep the hair natural and healthy. Sulfates, i.e. harsh detergents usually found in shampoo that strip your hair of moisture and lead to damaged, dry, straw-like hair. That's what normies think. But if you guys have seen, I don't know, one of my videos that I've posted, sulfates, as bad of a wrap as they get, sulfates aren't necessarily damaging to your hair. Too much sulfates and the wrong kinds of sulfates can be damaging from your hair. Because yes, sulfates are used as a detergent agent to help lift and strip the oils and dirt from your hair. And if you're using an unnecessary amount of that, then it's not gonna be good. But with the higher quality shampoo, uh, that are available and a lot of the stuff that I recommend, I mean, there's gonna be sulfates in them. The shampoo that I use has sulfates in them um, just because, I mean, I have a hair type that requires that cleaning ability. But I mean, if you don't need that cleaning ability, then yeah, sulfate-free shampoo would work. I don't know, watch one of Travel White's videos, he'll explain. Silicones, avoid silicones. Polymers found in 90% of conditioning and styling products that coat your hair to give it a smooth, shiny look. Okay, so this is very true. Again, especially with the poor quality products, they're gonna fill it with silicones, which I mean, too much of is very bad, but in moderation can be totally fine. But these lower end drugstore shampoos and conditioners will typically just load it up with silicone. So when you put it in your hair, it'll feel super soft. After the first wash, you'll be like, wow, this stuff's amazing. But over time, it builds up and builds up and builds up and you, know, you never get it out of your hair. Or you have to use some harsh detergenty sulfate shampoo to strip it all out, which also isn't good for your hair. So it's kind of like a cycle like that, right? Okay, towel drying your hair. Uh, towels rough your hair, cuticle lead to frizz. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not gonna dry my hair with a shirt. Uh, and alcohols, classic. Okay, so what I'm picking up based on what I've read so far, is it seems like this is a system that has been designed by somebody with knowledge and experience in hair and products, because I mean, the main things they're preaching are definitely right in that, I mean, you do want to avoid these super high sulfate shampoos. You do want to avoid products and conditioners that use uh, an abundance of silicones. And yeah, so far it seems pretty darn good in terms of the potential for this to actually help with your hair health. This is, I mean, pretty much exactly what I'd recommend you do. But my system would be a little bit more reasonably general in that, I mean, trust me, there's somebody watching this video right now that if they're using sulfate free shampoo, their hair is super oily and gross and they're not able to figure out why. It's because their hair isn't becoming clean enough because they're not using sulfates in their shampoo. It really depends on your hair type, but as general rules, and I think for most people, this seems pretty darn good. Can I use shampoo in the Curly Girl Method? The very first shower you take, in fact, require a reset shampoo, sulfate filled, clarifying shampoo. I use the Suave Ocean Breeze. Okay, I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that. Why? Because you need a total clean foundation stripped of all silicone wax. But okay, pro tip, don't just buy any shampoo that has a bunch of sulfates in it. Buy a reputable salon quality clarifying shampoo if you're gonna do this. Because you need a totally clean foundation stripped of all silicone and wax buildup or you'll never ever get this method to work for you. Hmm. This is interesting. I'm gonna see what products they are going to recommend. I'm assuming they're gonna do that. Because yeah, the only thing that I disagree with right now is just, I'm sure everything else in the system would work if you use a high quality product with a little bit of silicones in it and use a high quality shampoo that has a little bit of sulfates in it. You're still gonna be able to maintain a healthy optimized hair, especially if that's what your hair needs. Use sulfate free shampoos or cleansing conditioners. Okay, sulfate free shampoos, also called low poos, uh, as in low shampoo, contain gentle detergents to break down scalp oils and build up. Again, just because something is sulfate free doesn't mean it's high quality and good for your hair. There's tons of other stuff that goes into making a high quality shampoo, which is why the upper end salon stuff is expensive. There's a lot of research and development that goes into figuring out a formula that is optimized and genuinely as healthy as possible for your hair. So, uh, we'll see. If your hair feels squeaky instead of slippery, cleanser is too harsh. If you don't want to waste money, try mixing a few squirts conditioner uh, in the shampoo. Just get a good quality shampoo. You'll be fine. 
I wash my pores. Essentially, lightweight conditioners use shampoo. Again, if your hair doesn't get super oily and you don't need the harsh detergents, then don't. But if your hair does, then I mean, this probably isn't gonna do the trick. Okay, here we go. Your Curly Girl Method approved cleansers. Now, this is where I'm getting a little bit suspicious here because I'm pretty sure that Mane and Tail is literally a horse shampoo, or at least was. NYM's Blue Sea Kale and Pure Coconut Water Shampoo. Never heard of it, it's $9. I don't know. Curls Cream Curl Cleanser, uh, never heard of it. Uh, Eden Body Works Coconut Shade, never heard of it. Yeah, I've never heard of any of these, so can't recommend them. What products do I need for the Curly Girl Method? There's no single answer here because everyone's hair type is different. Very true, good work, Cosmopolitan. Ooh, okay. Your simple Curly Girl Method product lineup. Suave Natural Daily Clarifying Shampoo, $7. VO5, what? VO5 Moisture Milks Moisturizing Conditioner, $1. Holy smokes. It's like they got a Haircraft Co promo going on or something. Ah, Tresemme Botanique Conditioner. Yeah, no, and I feel like this has something to do with the fact it's written by Cosmopolitan because I can't imagine any professional hairstylist or self-proclaimed curl master like Lorraine or whatever her name was uh, recommending drugstore stuff. It's just not a thing. These might be sulfate free or gentle cleansers, but I mean, the quality of this stuff, if you've ever worked with professional quality hair product, you'll know that this stuff just isn't gonna do the trick and keep your hair healthy. There's just no way. But we are not going to blame the Curly Girl method for that. We're going to blame Chloe Metzger of Cosmopolitan. So from what I can tell, especially after reading that Cosmopolitan uh, article, what it seems like is the Curly Girl method is just a hairstylist's or curl expert's system to maintain optimized and healthy hair. But it just seems like with the amount that I've heard of the Curly Girl method, they just are way better at marketing than Jesse from Jesse's Barbershop. Because if you guys go back to a lot of my videos, you'll hopefully be able to recognize that a lot of these basic concepts they use to uh, promote healthy hair are things that, I mean, as a hairstylist, we just know that nobody ever does because things, I mean, the classic example is just using some drugstore stuff because they spend so much money on their advertisements and their marketing that, I mean, it makes you feel like it's super high quality stuff, but we just, we know the difference, right? So what it seems like is the Curly Girl Method, Lorraine, whatever the fuck, knew what she was talking about, developed this system and marketed it in a very clever and palpable way. So yeah, overall, huge fan of this Curly Girl Method. I haven't looked into it, but I imagine I would resonate a lot more with the original sacred text rather than the cosmopolitan new international version. Shout out Jesus. But yeah, I'd look into it. And I think what I'm gonna do is make a video that goes a little bit more in depth because this is kind of just an overview and what I think of the system. Um, which is probably less what you're hoping for when you clicked on this video. Uh, but maybe I'll do one of those. Hopefully this has given you a good enough sense as to what it is that the Curly Girl Method is, giving you a bit of a cliffhanger and uh, enough of a reason to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications for when I do come out with a video that you actually wanna watch. Oh gosh. That's it guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button because I think it's like 70 some percent of you guys that watch my videos aren't subscribed, but I'm pretty small and I don't really have that many videos or these, you know, the big numbers to impress you guys and hook you in. So, you know, it's totally fine. If you don't want to subscribe, fucking don't subscribe. That's fine. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching.